He is Dr. Vai Mohan Arupa, working as a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Welcome to all for lecture series of software engineering course. Today's topic, software project management. In this, we covered soft, what is software project? What are the project management activities? Under that project estimation, in that project estimation, some uh, estimation techniques like uh, lines of code method or technique or functional point technique. So these are the topics covered in our software project management activities. So first of all, uh, what is the outcome of this uh, topic? That is, illustrate the process models, approaches and techniques for managing software development process. That is software project management activities are there here. What is meant by project? What is meant by the project? Project is a group of tasks. Project is a group of tasks need to complete to reach the clear goals or clear ideas. It has set of activities are there in the project to complete the particular task. A project also defined also defined a set of inputs and outputs which are required to achieve a particular goal. To achieve a particular goal, what are the inputs and outputs are required? Those are put in the form of a sequential manner. Those tasks are there in the project. Software project. What is a software project? Software project is the complete procedure of software development form or in the form of software development from requirement gathering to maintenance what are the activities are there those are covered in a software project to accomplish to accomplish that particular goal in a particular time period in different phases all software development phases are covered in software project in a specific time period that is software project software project management so to manage that product by the software managers so what is meant by software project management what are the activities are there in the software project management so a proper way of planning and leading the software projects is there in the software project management. Proper way of planning and leading the software projects is there in the software project management. So it is the pro part of product management in which software projects are planned, implemented, monitored and controlled. It is a part of project management in which software projects are planned, implemented, monitored and controlled. These are the main focus of uh, software project management activities. Software project management is dedicated to planning, scheduling, resource allocations, execution tracking, and delivery of software projects. It is main focus on project planning. How project plans are going before start that projects? What is the schedule of project? How much time it will take to complete that project? And resource allocation, how many number of people are required to complete that particular project? As well as the execution, how we can execute, implement that project? What are the necessary softwares are required to complete that particular product? As well as track how much work is going, like the trackings, delivery of the software project, final phase after completion of the software development, delivery of the 
product. All these things are there in the software project management who can take off uh, software projects complete completion. So, software project product management activities. Some major activities are there. So, what are the software or project management activities are? It comprises name number of activities uh, which can contains planning of projects, deciding scope of software product, estimation of cost in various terms, scheduling of talks and events, resource management. These are the normal activities are there in the software project management. These activities are combined and majorly we call major activities of software management. Those are under the project management. I mean, a major important task is project planning. So, scope management, project estimation. These are the major activities of software project management. Software project managers can do the tasks. Those are covered in the software project, project management. Project planning, project planning, uh, decide the scope management, that is scope management. Next, estimation, project estimation. These are the major tasks of software project management. So, under that, first one is project planning. It is very important uh, task of project managers. Before starting that project's work, production work, before start the production work, uh, this planning is very important. So, what is project planning? So, project planning is an organized and integrated management processes which focus on activities required for successful completion of product. Successful completion of project. What are the activities are needed to uh, su successful completion of the project? Those are arranged in a sequential manner, systematic manner. Software project is a risk, is a task, first of all it is a task which is performed before the production of software actually starts. Before start the production, what are the tasks are required? Those are there in the project planning. Project planning should be effective so that the project begins with well defined tasks. So, everything is mentioned, everything is defined in a proper manner in the project planning. So, by uh, applying the, by using this project planning, the project development or production, it is very easy and small, smoothly it is going. So, next one, pro effective project planning helps to minimize the additional cost. It helps to minimize the additional cost incurred at the project while in the progress, while in the progress. Some meanwhile, in the product development, may, meanwhile, any problems are occur, any changes are occur, those are also by seeing the project planning, all these things are uh, uh, rectified and that's why additional costs are also incurred on the project while in, in the progress. Next one is scope management. Scope management identifies the scope of the project. That means boundaries of the project. Define the boundaries of the project. The all activities are also within this boundary of this particular project. Scope management is also essential because it creates the major boundaries of the project and is clearly defined what would be done in the project and what would be not done in the project that is there in the scope management. So, during the scope management, define the scope is one of the action, one of the task. So, decide verification and control is also one of the task. In the scope management, divide the project into various smaller pieces for smaller pieces for, for easy management. Total product can be divided into project divided into some smaller modules, subsystems for easily understanding and as well as easily uh, production point of view, the modularity is also important that is done by the scope management. So, verify the scope. 
as well as control the scope by the incorporating changes in the scope. These are the simple actions are performed in the scope management. So next one is project estimation. Project estimation is an effective management activity. For an effective management, accurate estimation of various measures is a must. That's why with correct estimation managers can manage the control, the product more effectively and efficiently. So that's why project estimation is important. Here, what are the different ways we can estimate that project in the sense in terms of size? That is size estimation. The size estimation may be uh, using maybe in terms of the size, what is the size estimation of the project is in terms of lines of code as well as function points. Size estimation is one of project estimation method. Other estimations are uh, effort estimation as well as time estimation. Effort estimation means how many number of uh, persons are required to complete that particular project. That is man hour requirement. How many people are used with uh, required to complete that particular product within a time period. So that's why time is also important. Time estimation. Once uh, how we can estimate the time based on the size estimation, based on that uh, effort estimation, we have to calculate the time estimation. These are the project estimation techniques. So size estimation as well as what is that effort estimation, time estimation. These are the project estimation methods. Some more uh, what is the project estimation things are there. Those are cost estimation also. In the later, later lectures, we will discuss about that cost estimation techniques. So come to First point that is size estimation. Size estimation techniques are lines of code as well as uh, what is that number of entities in ER diagrams, total number of process in detail, the data flow diagram, function points. These are the four uh, what are that cost, uh, I mean pro project size estimation measures. Size estimation measures are so lines of code, ER diagram entities, number of entities in the ER diagram, number of processes in detailed data flow diagrams, as well as function points. Here we discuss about lines of code as well as function points. So, lines of code, what is that lines of code? Simply we call LOC method. So, as the name suggests, LOC count the total number of lines of source code in a project. So, the lines of code is nothing but total number of lines of source code in the project is called lines of code. Lines of code. The units of lines of code, how we can measure how many lines in a project, like that way, how we can measure. So that is first one is thousands lines of code, K-L-O-C, that is kilos, thousands lines of K stands for kilos, thousand lines of code, N-L-O-C, that is non-commitment lines of code, non-commitment lines of code, not non-comment lines of code. Next K-D-S-I, that is thousands of delivered source instruction. Thousands of delivered source instruction. These are the units of uh, software size estimation uh, method under LOC, lines of code. So the size estimation by comparing with its existing system of the same kind. So for example, this is the lines of code for a particular program. So, so here from these two days, how many lines as per the definition of uh, lines of code in each and every line of line of uh, 
source code is there in the lines of code count. So, what are that? How many lines are there in this example? How we can calculate? Suppose this is one line. This is second line. This is third line. This is fourth line. This is fifth one. Here this one is six. This one is seven. This one is eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen lines are there in this simple example. So now what is the lines of code here? So how many lines of codes are there? As per this, actually 13 lines are there, but at actual LOC is equal to here 12. Because this one, the comment lines, the comment, this is the green color line, this is the comment line, it is not countable. So what is that? The comments and the blank lines in our source code, those are not count. So that's why here, this part of the program, this part of the software, which have 12 lines are there, which have 12 lines. So that's why the function shows, uh, uh, shows here what is there, that is 12 lines of code. Is the example for calculation of lines of code. Next to what are the advantages of these lines of code? So generally, it is a uh, used in the COCO model, COCOMO models, cost estimation model. COCOMO is cost estimation model. So here uh, in the calculation of the cost is also depends on the size. So everything, time estimation as well as the effort estimation as well as the cost estimation, all things are depends on size estimation. So here that's why the COCOMO cost estimation models are using LOC method. So, estimate second advantage, advantage is estimation is closer to developers as well as perspective. It is very simple. It is simple to use. That's why what are that the uh, LOC method is generally used for a small program, small software project developments. What are the disadvantages? Disadvantages are different programming languages contains the different number of lines. For the same logic, whatever that different programming languages uses different uh, fashion. So to write a program in uh, C is different, to write the program in Python is also different. That's why whatever that here, the lines of code uh, uh, technique is used to estimation of the uh, size. So then it is varies from uh, one language of code to another language. Right. So, other is the first disadvantage. Second one is no proper industry standard exists for this technique. So, generally one, two, three, four like that way it is calculated. So, then there is no proper industry standards exist for this technique. So, this is, that is also one of the disadvantages. As well as uh, it is difficult to estimate. Estimate the size using the technique in early stages of the project. In the beginning stages, so many changes are occur in the coding and all. So that's why the calculation of uh, uh, size is somewhat difficult by using this method. So we go for one more method that is a function point analysis or simply function point calculations. So in this method, number of uh, number and type of functions supported by the software are utilized to find FPC function point count. Calculate function point count. Based on this function point count, we have to calculate the efforts as well as estimate the effort, estimate the time as well as estimate the cost also. So here the steps of the function point analysis. Well, first one is count the number of functions of each proposed type. Count the number of functions. Second one is compute the unadjusted function points, UFPs, unadjusted function points. Next one is find total degree influence, that is TDI, TDI. Next one, compute value adjusted factor, that is VA, yeah, sometimes CAF also. Next one is find the function point count FPC. So these are the steps are there in the function point analysis. Now one by one. 
So what is that count number? The count the number of functions of each proposed type. Here the number of functions belonging belonging to the following what are the types that is depends on external inputs, external outputs, uh, external inquiries. Next day internal files and external interface files. These are that is the find the number of functions belonging to the following types. So how we can uh, count the number of functions in each proposed system in the sense the what is that belongings to the functions belongings to external inputs or external outputs or external inquiries or internal files or it may be external interface files. What is external inputs in the sense functions related to data entering entering the system. Outputs in the sense functions related to data existing the system. So as well as external inquiries in the sense they lead to the data retrieval from the system but doesn't change the system that is external inquiries. Internal files, logical files maintained within the system. Log files are not included here. So external interfaces are logical files now and the other applications which are used by the system. So these are there in the count the number of functions of each proposed type. So next one is compute the UP, UFPs that is unadjusted function points. Here it is depends on categorization of each five functions like simple, average, complex uh, as well as moderate like that. Five functions, five types of uh, uh, five function types are used in the UFP calculation. So by using the table here weighted table is also required by using the weighted tables we can calculate that UFPs. In the example we will discuss about this function point analysis. So next to final find total degree what is that of influence. So total degree of influence TDI is varies from 0 to 70. It is depends on 14 characteristics uh, general characteristics of a system find the degree of influences. So the sum of 14 uh, you know, 14 degrees of influences we, we give uh, the TDI it is uh, ranges from 0 to 70. So 14 characteristics as uh, performance and efficiencies or other parameters, other characteristics of uh, defined software development process. So next two stage is compute the value adjustment factor VAF. So that is by using the formula T VAF is equal to TDI into 0.01 plus 0 0.65 this is the predefined formula to compute the value adjustment factor. So finally find the functional cone, functional points. So the size of the project, the size of the project which can contains how many number of functional points. Depends on the functional points again calculate the effort estimation, again estimate the time, again estimate the cost also. But the size of the estimation using the function point, how many functional points are there in a software or in our project. So here that formula is FPC is equal to UFP unadjusted what is that functional point into VAF that is value adjustment factor. So this is the basic formula FPC is equal to UFP into V. A, F. This is the valid formula to calculate the functional points. See, step 1 generally in, in the uh, functional point analysis, the first step is F is equal to 14 into scale. The scale value, values are 0 to 5 uh, uh, to the character of complexity adjustment factor CAF. The scales are like this. 0 is no influence. 0 stands for no influence. One stands for incidental. Incidental means one. So moderate have two. Two means moderate. Three means average. Significant have value four. 
and essential have value 5. So these are defined scale 0 to 5 scale. First step f is equal to what is that 14 into scale. The scale may varies from 0 to 5. These are defined in the problem. So as per the problem definition, as per the problem requirements, so the use this appropriate scale of the factor, complexity adjustment factor, CAF. Second step, see calculate the complexity adjustment factor, CAF. CAF is equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.01 into F. So if F is previous step, we will get that F value. That F value use, is used in our CAF calculation. So 0 0.65 plus 0 0.01 into F. So that is the second step to calculate that complex, complexity adjustment factor. So next the third step, calculate the unadjusted function UFP point. So it is depends on table weights. So the weights are functional function units are like this EIO, EQIFL and EIF. So low means here the weights are like this 3 for 3 EI function unit as EI the which have the value the weight is 3 whenever it is low. So whenever it is average it is 4. Whenever it is a high, it is value is 6. These are the weights. Table is predefined table. The weights are also defined. So based on the average, based on the high, based on the moderate, based on the low, whatever the functional unit is there, for those units are applied, these weights to calculate that UFPs. Next, next step is calculate the function point. What is that function point? FP is equal to the last one. What is that? FP is equal to UFP into CAF. So UFP into CAF. Sometimes that CAF may be VAF also. We call VAF. For example, see. So with the help of example, we can analyze the functional points. Analysis. So example, the problem like this. Given the following values. Compute the function point when all complexity adjustment factor CAF and weighting factors are average. Weighting factors are average. This word is important. Average. So weighting factors are average. That's why we'll take that average values. So it is depends on some counting count first step as per that first step. What is that counting? First step of uh, uh, method, functional method, functional point analysis method, count the number of functions of each proposed type. So it is depends on external inputs, external outputs, external inquiries, internal files, as well as the external, external interface files. Those count is there in our problem like this. User input is equal to 50, user output is equal to 40, that means external input, external Output user in the sense external input, external external input 50, external output 40, user inquiries are 35 and user files are 6 and external interfaces are 4. These values are given, already given. So we have to find out the functional factor, functional points, functional point counts. So that's why as per that problem, what is that first step is as complexity adjustment factor is average. This is given in the problem. This is average. See here, yeah? that, that is there. The weighting factors are average. That's why. So here, the adjustment factor is average. Hence, the scale is 3. How we can take the scale is 3? How we can take the scale is 3 in the sense this one. Average values. See here. Yeah? From this one, the step one, this is value average is equal to 3. So that's why here the 3 value we have to take and so then go for what are that? Scale is equal to 3. First step, F is equal to 14 into CAF. As per our formula, F is equal to 14 into CAF. That's why 14 into, what is that? 3 is the CAF value because the scale value is equal to average. 
3. So that's why it is equal to 3. So that is 42. That is 42. Next to what is the step 2? CAF is equal to 0 0.65 plus 0 0.01 A into F. So this is F value. F value from the first step we have calculated that is 42. So that's why the total value is equal to 0 0.65 plus 0 0.01 into 42. Then we will get that 1.07. That is CAF value. CAF value. Go for step 3. Once CAF is over, then go for step 3 for the calculation of UFP. Calculation of UFP. How we can calculate the UFPs? As weighting factors are also average. This is given in the problem. Average is given in the problem. So hence we will multiply each individual function point to corresponding values in the table already defined. So this is the values. So table values. What, what values we want to take here? Again take for average because it is found in the problem. These values we have to take and corresponding what is that multiplication, the corresponding value with multiplication. What is here? Corresponding values in the table uh, multiply individual function point. Individual function point is equal to what is that here? User inputs, external user inputs or user input is equal to 50. User output is equal to 40. User inquiries is equal to 35. That means here this is as per table. This is EI, external or user input. So, user output, that is external outputs. So, user inquiries are external inquiries, EI. User files, here F. So, next one is external. What is that here? External interfaces. Those are external interfaces. That's why as per that values, this one, this one, EI, EO, UEQ, ILF, EIF. So, based on corresponding values into this average values. So, what is there here? So, 50 into 4. 50 into 4. EI into 4. This is the value. EI value is 50. EI value is 50. And what is that here? Average for EI is equal to 4. That is 50 into 4. 50 into 4. Next, what is that here? E O is equal to what is that? E O is equal to 40. So E O is equal to 40. So that's why 40 into 5. This 5 is the weighted value in the table. So 40 into 5. See here this is the E O value. Corresponding average value is equal to 5. That's why 40 into 5. 40 into 5. Next one is user Inquiries, user inquiries, EQ, user inquiries, UQ. EQ directed value is what is that? 35. EQ 35. The average value is 4. The, from the table. See here. So EQ 4. That is 35 is the EQ value into 4 is the average value. Average value. Next to user files. ILF. I, L, F. User, what is that? User files, interface files. Six number of files are there. The corresponding value in the table is 10. So, user files are 6. User files are 6. And corresponding value is 10. That is 6 into 10. Weight is equal to 6, to 6 into 10. Next, what is there in our problem? External interface. External interfaces are the 4. So, external interfaces are the 4. And the value, average value from the table, it is 7. That's why here from the table, 4 into this one. Here, 5. 5 in, what is that? ELF are the 4. ELF are the 4 into corresponding average value 7. Corresponding average value 7. That's why here. 4 into 7. So, 4 into 7. Now, 50 into 4. 
plus 40 into 5 plus 35 into 4 plus 60 into 10 plus 4 into 7 is equal to 628 value which is which which has UFP an adjustable function point. So finally the function point calculation how you can get in the sense that is UFP what is that formula FP is equal to FP is equal to UFP into UFP into CAF UFP into CAF that is equal to 628 into 1.07 that, that's why we we'll get that 671.96 671.96 this is the actual functional point count so this is the way of uh, calculation of uh, number of functional point in our project so what are the advantages of this uh, software uh, functional point calculation or analysis it is it can be easily used in the early stages of uh, software project planning so it is independent of the programming language it can also be used as compare different uh, projects even uh, they use the different technologies like databases, languages or etc. What else? These are the major advantages. Come to disadvantages, it is not good for real-time systems and embedded systems. So, most common estimation like Sir Pocomo uses this. What is that? Functional point estimation. So, LOC and hence FPC must be covered in converted to LOCs. So, no comparison of uh, uh, FP and uh, LOC. What are the differences, major differences between functional point as well as uh, lines of code? That means functional point is a metric specification, I mean specification based, metric specification based. So, LOC is analogy based. Function point metric is language independent, but LOC metric is dependent on language. Functional point metric is user oriented. So, LOC is design oriented. Function point metric is extended to lines of code. So, but the lines of code it is changeable to FP. Function point is used for data processing systems as well as LOC is used for calculating the size of computer programs. Function point can be used properly in the project times. LOC is used for calculating and comparing the productivity of programs. So, these are the major differences are there in the function point as well as lines of code. Thank you. These are the references are used to uh, discuss about this topic. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.